the greatest way to feel good in your heart is to read the Surah at duha because it is the most amazing Surah in the Quran that tells you to be positive and to feel good about Allah Azawajal. Shall I tell you the meaning of duha in a way that perhaps you have not heard before? Surah duha was revealed at a time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not receive the revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for six months. For six months, the Prophet Sallallahu did not receive any revelation from Allah. Jibreel didn't come down, he didn't see a dream. You know, there was a time when I used to see a lot of good dreams. And then these days when I'm busy with Mercy Mission, I'm so tired. My brain is so tired, I actually don't see dreams. Sometimes I don't feel like my salawat, my ibadat is actually making an impact on my heart and on my life. So I feel quite disconnected from Allah Azawajal. Do you get that feeling sometimes guys? Brothers, sisters? Yes? Sometimes you feel like it's not affecting me. It's like Allah is not responding to me. He's not talking to me. I don't see good dreams anymore. I don't get the shiver down my spine anymore. I'm not feeling the pleasure anymore. What's going on? In the same way for six months, the Prophet did not receive any revelation from Jibreel coming down all the way to a dream or nothing at all for six months. And so the Prophet thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates him. He thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want him as a Nabi anymore. So all these thoughts were coming in his mind. Isn't that right? When we start thinking the same, some of us start thinking, Oh my God, Allah must hate me. Look at my life. Allah must really not want me. Look at the situations, my circumstances. I must be a wretched, downtrodden human being. Allah doesn't care anything at all. Allah mustn't even care about my dua. Sometimes these thoughts come to your mind. This is how the Prophet was when this surah was revealed. So what did Allah say? Allah said, duha." By the sun and the morning in its blazing glory. duha. So first thing that you tell someone who's depressed, wake up, see the sunlight. It's not all doomsday. It's not all doom and gloom. There's a beautiful sun out there, beautiful light. duha. And by the night as it envelops. The second problem with people who are depressed is they stay up the nights. They go to sleep in the morning, they stay up at nights. So everything is doomy and gloomy. They have a bad sleep-wake pattern. And then by the night as it gives comfort. Allah does not hate you, O Muhammad. Allah doesn't hate us. Allah doesn't hate you, Muhammad, nor has he forgotten you. In the same way, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, Allah doesn't hate you. And Allah has not forgotten you. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala. Walal akhiratu khayrun laka minal ula. And indeed, the hereafter will be far better for you than this dunya. What is coming is going to be far better for you than what situation you're in now. And very soon, Allah will give you a massive reward and He will make you happy. Very soon, O Muslimin, Allah will give us Jannah, inshallah, and make us happy. Very soon, Allah will give us a victory from all of this and make us happy. Very soon, Allah has promised this and of a surety, very soon. Very soon we'll go to Jannah, inshallah. Very soon. Isn't this the most beautiful thing to say to a person who feels bad in his heart? Then Allah gives him reasons to believe this. What does he say? Alam fa'awa. He gives people reasoning so that you believe this. He says, Alam yatiman. Did he not find you an orphan and look after you? Ask yourself, weren't you very sick sometimes? Weren't you a little boy and Allah looked after you? Weren't you a little girl, no one to care for you? And Allah looked after you? Alam yijidka yatiman fa'awa wa wajadaka dhalan fahada And we found you misguided, didn't we guide you? Weren't we misguided brothers and sisters before we became practicing? I know I never used to pray myself. I never knew about my deen. Didn't Allah find me misguided and guide me? In the same way, weren't you misguided and Allah guide you? 
Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find you poor in need of wealth and didn't Allah give you wealth? How many of us came to Australia? We never had any money. How many of us but Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on us, pity on us and He made us wealthy. How many of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked after us when by Allah our family still are struggling back home? So Allah gives more and more reasoning to Rasulullah and to us, reminding us again and again why you should believe everything else that Allah has said, His promises that will come true. So to the depressed person, this is the best way to reason by telling him about the past and giving him reason to believe that Allah's promises will come true just like it did in the past. Then Allah gives the antidote to depression. Do you know what it is? <clears throat> The depressed person is more concerned about himself. But the best way to remove depression and this feeling of being disconnected with Allah is to remember those people who are far, far in more difficulty than you. Allah continues and says, And so the orphan, do not be hard on him. And the one who asks you, do not say no to him. So Allah tells us, remember two types of people. The first is an orphan, the number two is a beggar. Remember the orphans, they have no one to look after. You have parents to look after you. You have family to look after you, somewhere to go home. The orphans have nobody. Sail, the beggar, he has no food. He's asking you for food. He goes to sleep hungry every day. Allah has given you food. How many of us has ever gone to sleep hungry, subhanAllah? So Allah tells us the antidote, which is to look at people below us. And then the final way to remove this feeling of being disconnected from Allah. Do you know what? And the blessings of your Lord enumerate. Talk about the blessings of Allah. Alhamdulillah for my eyes. Alhamdulillah for my hands. Alhamdulillah for my mouth. Alhamdulillah for my heart. If Allah didn't love us, why is He still keeping us alive? If Allah didn't like us, why is He giving us sustenance for every minute that we are alive? If Allah didn't love us, why are we here today? Sharing this knowledge, increasing in wisdom and love of Allah Azawajal. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, next time you feel disconnected, read Surah Duha. And by Allah, you will feel the same love that the Prophet ﷺ received from Allah Azawajal. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will of a surety bless him and of a surety bless us insha'Allah. Very soon, very soon Allah's promise will come true. My brothers and sisters in Islam, it is for this reason what Sufyan al-Thawri says that amazing statement. He said, Wallahi, I would not replace Allah with my parents to be the judge on the day of judgment. I would rather have Allah judge me rather than my parents on the day of judgment. Because I know Allah loves me more than my parents. Ya Salaam. If you believe Allah loves you more than your parents, Allah will love you more than your parents. If you believe Allah can forgive all your sins, Allah will forgive all your sins. If you believe Allah will reward you and enter you into Jannah, Allah will not betray your, your, your faith in Him. Allah will, inshaAllah, answer your dua and enter you into Jannah. Bi'ithnillah, inshaAllah ta'ala.